In this video, we're gonna take a look at a couple simple layouts that actually have a few challenges to them that if you don't know how to approach it, you might run into some trouble, especially when you get into a responsive view. So the first one here we're gonna take a look at is this two column layout where we have an image on the left, text on the right, but we have this background color behind the text column that spans a little bit over behind the photograph and spans all the way to the edge of the viewport on the right. Now there are some tricky ways to do this with a bunch of negative margin on everything, but we're gonna avoid that and use a simple uh, CSS solution that will let us achieve all of this, where it still works nice when we go into tablet and then stacks vertically here when we go onto mobile. And the second layout we're gonna be taking a look at is another two column layout with an image on the left, except in this example, the image is gonna span all the way to the edge of the viewport, while the text on the right is gonna stay within this container width of your website. So let's go ahead and jump into how to build all of this out. I'll include all the CSS you'll need inside the video description below, so you can go ahead and grab that and use this on your layouts. So let's go ahead and dive in. So this first one we're gonna work on is this uh, deceptively challenging number one here, where we have the background color that spans the width of the viewport and then stops here behind this image. So we'll go ahead and jump in here. We just have a blank page in here right now. And the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and add a container. We'll jump in here to the block settings and give it just a little bit of padding so it's not crammed up against the top of the website. And then we're going to add a grid in here. So we'll do a grid, we'll do a two column grid, and we'll give it about 80 pixels of horizontal gap in between. So on this left column, we're gonna go ahead and add an image. We'll jump in here and grab this image from my media library. And in the example, I had some border radius on this. So we'll go ahead and give that 16 pixels of border radius. Now on the left hand side, we're gonna have to drop in some text. So the first thing we'll do is add a headline widget. We'll just say, this is your headline. And then we'll add some lorem ipsum text beneath that. All right, so here in this column, we're gonna grab the column settings and we're gonna set the vertical alignment to center. So this centers in here. Now all this text has a little bit of uh, bottom margin. So one trick to get rid of that is just go in here and change this to a generate blocks headline, change the tag to paragraph, and then we can delete that bottom margin in there so it's nice and even in this column. Now we wanna have a background color behind this. So in this example, I'm gonna use a darker color, this dark blue color. However, where I've seen this used most frequently, it's a very light color behind it, but it's hard to see that in a demo. So we're gonna go ahead and go with this dark blue color. Now, a couple things we're gonna need here. Inside this column, we're gonna need a little bit of padding top and bottom here, just in case this row is ever not tall enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump in here and give this 24 pixels of padding on the top and 24 pixels of padding on the bottom. Now, we're also going to want this image to have a little padding above and below it. So when we scoot this blue color over, it shows up above it and below it. So I'm gonna grab the column that the image is inside and I'm gonna give that about 48 pixels of padding on the top and 48 pixels of padding on the bottom. So that way we'll see here that it's gonna end up a little bit taller uh, on the top and bottom of the image. So with that in place here, we can go ahead and hit update. Now we're gonna have to jump back and forth a few times to make all this work, but we'll go ahead and jump here into the customizer and start writing some of the CSS that we need. All right, so the first thing we need to do on this container is go ahead and give this a class. So for now, I'm gonna call this BG Offset Right. And we'll save that. We'll go in here to the customizer and re refresh this page just so we have everything we need. We'll get rid of the CSS I already had in there as I was demoing this. All right, so the first thing we need to do is tell this BG Offset Right, BG Offset Right, we need to give this a position of relative because we're actually gonna use a pseudo selector to work on this background and we're gonna to have to give that absolute positioning. So in here we'll do BG offset right. And in this case, we'll go ahead and do a before. And so for this pseudo selector, we're gonna give it a content that's just gonna be blank. We'll do the position absolute. 
We'll give it a background color that's the same color as the blue we have in there, which I have set up as a variable, so that's gonna be accent. Now we'll give it a width, and for this width, just to be safe, I'm gonna give it a value of 200 viewport width, so it's two times the width of my viewport. That way, if somebody's on a larger monitor, this is still gonna span far enough. And now we'll give it a height of 100%. And we can see now, if we stop, that we have this this background filling up that entire area now, and it is spanning all the way across here, 200 viewport width. Obviously we have some side scrolling here that we're gonna need to fix, uh, but for now that's okay. We'll go back and fix that here in a second. But the problem is, is it's just starting here where this column starts, and we actually wanna move it over to the left behind this image sum. So we'll continue writing a little bit more CSS. So we're gonna go on here and we're gonna say the left, we want this to be a negative 50%. So this is gonna move this slightly over this image. Right now, we have some problems with the index, which we'll fix in a second. But we can see that now, you know, without this, there, the image is stopping about here. And when we paste that back in, we can see how far that blue is going over. Now, in the demo, I actually rounded these corners too, just to kind of match the image. So we can do that with a border, top, left, radius. We'll do 16 pixels, and we'll do a border, bottom, left, radius of 16 pixels. So now we have those rounded edges there. So now we have quite a bit of this already set up, but we got some uh, fixing up here to do with the Z index issue as well as the side scrolling here. So I'm gonna jump back into the editor and I'm gonna go to this outermost container we have. Now what we're gonna have to do is change the overflow on this container to hidden. So I'm just gonna do a little utility class for this right now called overflow hidden. Um, and we'll use that to go ahead and write the CSS we need for that. So in here, I'm just gonna select that uh, overflow hidden and we'll do overflow hidden on it. Now I haven't reloaded this page yet, but as soon as I click this and it refreshes, now that we've added that class on there, we should be good to go. So now you can see our side scrolling is gone. So that is taken care of. It's just stopping here. And if we zoomed out of the site, you can see that continues to go all the way out. I actually have a cap on how wide this entire thing can be, um, but that should take care of the overflow issue there. So the next thing we need to take care of is this Z index issue where these, this pseudo selector is actually above our text and above our image. We'll go ahead and give this a Z index for now. We'll just give this a Z index of zero. Oh, that's, that's not gonna change anything at this point. So we're gonna have to jump back into the editor here and we'll go ahead and grab this first container on the left and over here in our settings, we're gonna set the outer Z index to 10 and the inner to 11. Uh, this is, it might not be necessarily go that high, but that will just ensure that we get this on top. We're also gonna grab the container on the right and do the same thing. So we'll go 10 and 11 and we'll save this. And we can go in here and refresh this page. And now the text is in front. Unfortunately, the image still isn't. So we'll go back here and go to that container and we'll change this to, whoop, we'll change this to, uh, we'll do 12 and 13. And I bet that fixes it. Uh, there's some magic number working here. Um, Okay, there we go. So now we have the text on, on top of the background color as well as the image. So as far as desktop goes, this is completely solved at this point. Now we're gonna have to do some tweaks here to make this work on tablet and mobile. Uh, as you can see here on tablet, we just have some alignment issues. This image is, it's got that extra padding on top of it. So it's not lining up nicely with that heading. We can fix that inside the editor. And then here when we go to mobile, this is actually stacking on top of each other, which is what I want, but now we need to bring this blue background up behind the image so you can tell that those two things are connected. So let's go ahead and tackle those. So I'm gonna jump back here to the editor and we're gonna change this to the tablet view. And I'm gonna grab this column on the left that houses our image. We've given this column on the right 24 pixels to top and bottom, and this one on the left actually has 48. So I'm just gonna match those up and go 24 and 24. So if we jump back over here and refresh this again, 
and we go to the tablet view, we can see that now these are lining on the top, which looks a whole lot better. Now I will say there is probably too much gap at this point, but that's another thing we can fix pretty easily if we jump in here to the grid and we change this gap from 80 to maybe 40. We'll update that again, jump to the customizer, refresh this page, and now I think the tablet version of this is ready to go. So the next thing we need to do is tackle this mobile version. So for this, we're actually gonna go back to writing a little bit more CSS to take care of this. What we're gonna need first is a media query. So I'm gonna type in here, uh, at media, and we're gonna do a max width of 768 pixels, which is the breakpoint here for my theme, Generate Press, uh, to go to the mobile version. So in there, we're gonna go ahead and grab this pseudo selector again. We'll copy that, we'll paste it in, and we'll open our curly brackets. And we're gonna to have to do just a little bit of changes to what's already here. So a lot of this we don't need to repeat. All we're gonna to have to change is this uh, height value and we're gonna to have to give it a top value. So what I'll do here is I'll start with top and I'm gonna do a negative 30% here. And when I do that, you can see this pseudo element has jumped up behind the image, which is exactly what we wanted. Unfortunately, it's moving up and now you can see where the pseudo selector stops and this container starts. And obviously that's not a good look there. So what we need to do for this is just change the height of that pseudo selector. So before it was 100%, which you can see here. Now we've moved it up 30%. So all we need to do is change this to 130%. So now we can see we have the image here, the text here, and this background overlaps behind it. So we'll go ahead and save that and cycle through all these, everything should be working perfectly fine in here. If I was gonna get picky, I might want to uh, reduce a little bit of the space in between this headline and image, but for now and for this demo, I think that's perfectly acceptable. All right, so let's go ahead and tackle the other deceptively challenging layout. So if you remember on this second deceptively challenging layout, we have an image that spans all the way from the left side of the screen to halfway across the viewport and then a second column here with the text that starts where we want it and ends here where the uh, container of our website is. So you can see here where my menu is, this text is ending at about the same place. We don't want this to span the full width of the screen as well. So this one is actually a lot easier to fix than the last one uh, and it does create a nice effect. So let's go ahead and jump in here and start building this out. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a container and we're gonna change this inner container width to full width because we need that image to go all the way to the left-hand side. Now inside of that, we'll go ahead and grab a grid and we'll do a two column grid. And in this one, we're actually not gonna put a gap in it uh, for this specific one. So you can leave this just at the defaults. Now on the left-hand side, we're gonna scroll down here to the backgrounds and we're gonna give this the background image. So we'll use that same image as before and that will fill in that space there. Now we do probably want to set some kind of minimum height for this. So I'll go ahead and just put 400 pixels for the time being. Now in the second container, we also need our headline and text. So I'll go ahead and put in, this is a headline, and then we'll drop some lorem ipsum inside here as well. So for this container, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and align the vertical alignment to the center as well. But you can see we have a few problems already. One, this text is crammed right up against the edge of the image, and two, it's going all the way to the edge of the browser, which is what we're definitely wanting to fix in here. So I'm gonna grab this container again, and I'm gonna give it some padding. So we'll go ahead and give it 24 on the top, just to be safe. We'll give it 24 on the bottom, just to match that. And then we need some kind of gap here in between these two. Uh, the reason I didn't set a gap on the actual grid is I wanted this image to stop dead center in the middle of the frame. And if I put a gap here, it's actually gonna offset it slightly to the left, which I think just as you scroll through the site uh, can play with your eye a little bit. So I want that to be straight in the center. So I wanna just move this text over a little bit. So we can give this a left padding here of 48 pixels and that will bring it in. Now on the rest of my site, I've given 
uh, every container in here, including my header, 24 pixels of left and right padding. So I'm just gonna go ahead and match that here. Now, by default, I think Generate Press has 30 pixels there. It's just something I've changed. So this is a bit of a magic number here. You're gonna wanna match this up with whatever your default uh, left and right padding is inside of your theme. And this will become important here in a minute when we go ahead and try to get this all lined up. So we'll go ahead and save this now. Well, I'm gonna get rid of the old CSS I had, and then we'll go ahead and take a look at this on the front end and see where we're at right now. So right now, the image is doing exactly what we want it to. Uh, we have the gap that we need right here, and the problem is our text is expanding all the way to the edge of the viewport minus the 24 pixels of padding we have. And what we wanna do is get it to stop right here. So that's challenging on this end because we don't have a good way to stop this exactly where we need it to because this entire container is set to full width. So I'm gonna show you how I have solved that issue. I'm gonna go back here into the theme and we'll go to layout and we'll go to container. And this is the number you need to pay attention to. Our container on this site is set to 1280 pixels. Now yours might be different, so you're gonna have to work with the number you have here instead of just copying and pasting my number. But since we know that the container is 1280, what we need to figure out is what is half of that because we're using 50% of it over here. So I'm just gonna grab my calculator here and I'm gonna type in 1280, well, 1280, and I'm gonna divide that by two. And that comes up with 640 pixels. So imagine my container from the edge here to the edge here, half of that is 640 pixels, which is what we need for this space. So with that in mind, I'm gonna go back to this container here that holds my text, and I'm gonna give this a class as well. So let's see here, we'll go to block, we'll scroll down to the bottom and go to the advanced and additional CS class containers. I'm gonna give this um, a class of half container width. And we'll go ahead and save that. We'll open up here in the customizer and refresh this page. And we'll go back into our additional CSS. And what I wanna do is just go ahead and paste in that class I just gave that container. And we're gonna do a max, max, come on, type with me here, max width. And we gotta go back to that number we just came up with. So in this case, it's 640 because I want this to line up over here, which is half of my container width. So we'll do 640 pixels. Now you see when we do that, now we have this lining up here. Even when we stretch this to full width, you can see that this is following my container width here. So that solves our problem of not having this span all the way across. Of course, if we jump in here into the mobile, we still have this side-by-side -side layout. We might wanna change our padding here to bring these a little bit closer together, but we can fix that. And then when we go to our mobile view, uh, we have too much padding on this side. So those things we can fix inside the editor here. So what I'll do is with this container selected, I'm gonna to go to the tablet version and I'm just gonna even out this padding all around it. So instead of having 48 on the left, I'm gonna to go to 24. And then when we go down to mobile here, uh, we can have 24 all the way around it, which I think will work fine. So with those changes, I think this second layout will be totally done. So as we can see here on the front end, this is lining up. In fact, if I just go ahead and grab this little tool and see my grid, I can see here where my container is at the edge here where this red line is, it matches up with my header. And then I have the padding inside my header, which is 24 pixels and the padding inside this container, which is 24 pixels. So we can tell that all that is lining up fine. We'll go ahead and refresh this inside the customizer as well so we can look at all the responsive views. So here it is on desktop, on tablet, and on mobile where everything stacks. One other thing we might wanna do is maybe reduce the height of this image. So we can go in here uh, on this container where my background image is and we can change that uh, minimum height. So let's go in here and this should be inside my spacing. And the minimum height is still defaulting to the 400 I gave it before, so maybe we change that to 250 pixels. We'll go in here and we'll refresh this second challenge again. And now we can see that's a little bit better size. Now this goes from full width from the left to the right, and then this text underneath it. 
I hope that this quick little tutorial helped you out with these couple little layouts. I love finding layout challenges like this and figuring out exactly how I can make them work inside of my preferred stack, which is generate press and generate blocks. So if you come across something and you're having troubles trying to recreate it on your end, go ahead and send it over to me. I would love to check it out and see if I can solve that puzzle and maybe I can do a video on it and show you exactly how it's done.